Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and from now we are going to understand the concepts of object oriented programming through code. So in the uh, last lecture we have uh, seen about object oriented programming, what are the advantages of object oriented programming, what are OOP's concept of objects, classes, abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. We have seen all these six concepts in the last video of theory from now we are going to start the code part and let us understand how to write the code in object oriented programming so let's get started so let's begin the session by understanding what are variables what are methods and then we'll go step by step about classes objects and all the other concepts of object oriented programming so let us understand what are variables and what are functions variables are nothing but it's a container it's a type of container where we store the data values for example a is equal to 10 now what is a now a is a variable and which is storing the data 10 we have seen this example even in the theory part the last video where a is the variable and storing the uh, value of 10 so now here b is a variable which stores the data of data value of string if you want to see the type of particular uh, variable a and if you want to similarly see the type of particular variable b see the difference is that the first thing is integer and the second thing is string so i hope everyone know what are uh, integers and what are string what we can observe here is that when you say type of a and type of b is giving something as class class of int class of string these are the classes that already pre-built in uh, in python so we can even define our own type of classes which we'll learn in this session now if you basically understand what are the functions see the functions in python can be created by using def def keyword you can create a function by using a def keyword that is uh, using a df keyword and then writing the function name as uh, beside that and then you can write your own uh, function that it should perform whenever you call that particular function right suppose i want to add two variables you can write a is equal to like it's suppose i'm adding two numbers and i'm changing it to b now if i want to add i can say a plus b print me see whenever you call the function that you have created it's going to perform the lines of code that you have been written in the complete function see when i run it it's asking me to enter the number and i'm entering one it's asking me to enter another number and i'm entering two it's giving me the output three as you can see in the terminal now this is what the basic function you can create and also you can pass the parameters in the function instead of uh, writing input statements you can directly write a comma b in the function itself and when you call that particular function you can pass those values like suppose when i see here when you're calling the function it's asking for a and b like if i give a as 10 and b as 20 there's no need of me inputting again in the terminal uh, while finding the output it will give me directly so this is what how we create the functions how we define the variables now let's understand about classes so now let us understand how do we create class as we have seen in the last lecture last session that classes are nothing but it's a blueprint of an object now let me explain you from the beginning that how it is the blueprint of an object and how do you create an object from a class right so if i'm creating a class you can generally create a class by using a class keyword as if you're creating a function by using def here you create the class by using a class keyword and you can write the name of class as anything that you want suppose if i take an example of bookstore it contains a lot of books it contains a lot of uh, different types of books like academic novel competitive uh, books for example if we take a bookstore right and i'm just passing the statement and it should i'm just creating a class not doing anything now i said you whenever we create a class we can create the objects using that particular class right so now i what i'm doing is i am creating an object b1 let us take b1 as book one and i'm creating an object of bookstore right 
now i am defining the attributes of those particular instance so you can say this as instance attribute now this b1 you can call it as an object or you are instantiating a class right now b1 dot i'm creating an attribute as title was the title of book so i'm writing the title name as a learn python and i'm writing b1 dot author of that particular book is julie we just we are taking an example of how the object oriented programming works i can create an another uh, instance of b2 like this is b1 is a book one of the bookstore b2 is the book two of bookstore and now i'm similarly creating title but i'm writing here learn java and also writing the author b2 dot author as john right now if i was supposed to print the title and author of the particular instance b1 then you can say directly as print b1 dot title if i suppose want to print the title of b2 then i can write b2 see i have got learn python and learn java now what's uh, see if you have uh, in a bookstore there are thousands of books right now for those thousand books you are creating thousand instances and you are creating multiple attributes for that for that each object it will be a very difficult task uh, i have created a cost and sold attributes in the uh, book one and i'm creating a function def with i'm creating a function called earned amount and i'm passing a self parameter now this is what like actually i want to calculate the um, cost of the book and the number of copies being sold so that is a earned amount right now see the function in a class is called method now how to call the method by using a dot operator how do i call a method for that particular instance or the particular object by using a dot operator now this is b1 dot earned amount if i don't pass self here then it will give an error self is nothing but this particular object that i am passing here this b1 is directly taken as self right if i don't pass self then it will give me an error of one positional argument is given zero required earned amount takes zero positional um, uh, argument but one given so the output you can see here that earned amount function takes zero positional arguments but one given what is this one given talking about this b1 is the one given b1 is nothing but the self that we pass here so self is nothing but the object itself that we are passing while calling the function now if i want to calculate it i can write like sold comma cost i want to multiply i can say return me the sold into cost now uh, whenever i call the function i should pass those two parameters of sold and cost and you will get the output now here i have not passed check out here i have not passed two positional arguments right one is sold and cost see actually we have given here three arguments but python internally gave this v1 as self this self can be any word that you want to give like uh, object whatever you want to give but easy understanding we give it self now here self means b1 and sold cost you need to pass the parameters inside the function where sold i am giving it as b1 dot sold and cost i am giving it as b1 dot cost now i need to print this complete statement see now i am printing it over here and you will get 7500 as an earned amount so that is 150 is the cost of the book 50 books have been sold so 750 books was a earned amount that you can say right now now there's a problem for this you are creating thousand instances i mean you're creating thousand of objects for one particular class so it will be an entire hectic task to create thousand uh, objects and thousand uh, and multiple attributes for those each object that you create so for this you can get use of that one magic method that's called init method that we'll just see right now so it's also called a constructor i am creating a init method with double underscore init double underscore and it will be passing self i have explained you that self is nothing but those particular objects that you are creating which is internally passed 
bhai pak hai in it i'm sorry suppose here you are uh, calling this b1 dot title now i can write pass over here self dot title is equal to title self dot title is equal to title and i'm passing that in this parameter now what's happening here is that this self dot title whatever the value is being passed by the parameter is saved in self dot title suppose i have uh, removed this b1 dot title so here it's asking me for a title right now what is the title i can give i'll give it similar as python let me uh, remove everything and write print b1 dot title it will print me that particular here the problem is that i have not given uh, the positional argument over here so you can uh, you can pass here as learn java and there will be no uh, error right here i am printing python how the python is being printed by using this init init method what init method does is whenever you create an object the constructor is being called automatically now we have heard it many times that whenever an object is created the constructor is being called automatically for example let me close all these attributes and explain you that how it is being called right now i have uh, created when i create the two instances of when i create once it will be printing when i create once when i create once it will be printing once object call when i again recreate it by creating another object it will it's it will be printing twice that means what i want to explain here is that whenever you create an object the init method is being called automatically like there there are few of the parameters that you need to pass every time you call an object so you can uh, do it by this method where you can pass as we have done before that is title we have also wrote author you have wrote quantity of the books you can write sold you can write cost and you can pass those by using self dot title is equal to title similarly you are doing it for self dot author is equal to author self dot quantity is equal to quantity self dot sold is equal to sold self dot cost is equal to cost so these are the must entered parameters whenever you create an object so it will give me an error right now if i run this because there are no parameters that have been passed so it's showing me as you can see that it's showing me that bookstore i need to pass title so let me pass a title called learn python it's asking me about author the author is suppose julie and then i'm sending the quantity as 100 it's asking me the sold copies that are 50 and the cost of per book is 150 that i have passed then similarly you can do it here learn java Also, you can pass it as drawn. Pass also, you can pass it as drawn, and you can now give the quantity as one fifty. The sold copies as hundred books, and the cost per book is one twenty. The cost per book is one twenty. Now, if you want to access any of the variables, you can write just print the object name and the attribute name. Like suppose you want to get author of the particular book, you get it, Julie, as you can see right here. See, you can see here when we did a function called see when we call that particular function with b1 b1 dot earned amount it's asking me for the sold so you can say b1 dot sold comma b1 dot cost and you run it sorry i need to print it over here let me get rid of this print and your output will be 7500 here i'm passing the parameters over here But if I don't want to pass in this pass the variables of self dot cost and self dot, if I pass directly self dot sold and self dot cost, it would be easier for me. I can write it here: self dot sold and self dot cost, and you will get the similar output without passing any parameters over here. Because once you have passed the parameters, there's no need to pass again when you create an instance. you are sending self that means you are sending the object name over there that's it and this is how you work with methods why you create self why do you you can instead of self you can use any other name but it will be easy for understanding the self so we use 
itself as a parameter that we pass for an object see if i want to put quantity uh, if i want to put the sold copies as zero suppose there are no sold copies by default i want to put zero until and unless the user puts it so i can put the sold copies as zero and if i don't pass that sold copy even there's no error being given like 50 is the sold copy that i have passed but i'm removing an object b1 and it will not give me any of any kind of error see suppose if i print b1 dot sold it means so i think i should give the non -def default attributes at the end see i need to give the default attributes at the end otherwise it's giving me an error so these are the default values that you can put if the uh, if you don't want to pass, make it a mandatory parameter that you need to pass while creating an object, right? After that, we have uh, we have completed about init method. We have completed what itself. We have understood how to call a method, how to call an attribute. I mean, how to create an attribute. We have learned all these things till now. For now, suppose uh, as we have seen, for example, we have uh, wrote all these parameters, right? And when I'm passing it, maybe if I have used here the integer. But I have put a string over here and for the particular cost of B2, I am using a string. But the output will be very different that we will be uh, seeing over here. See, now you can see it's printing. First of all, it's printing B2.cost that we have given as uh, 100, which is just a string that's passing over here. And then afterwards, the cost after that, we have used the earned amount method where what it's doing self dot sold what is the value of self dot sold sold has a value of 10 and cost has the value of 100 so it's repeating 100 10 times that you can see over here if I, if I give a space it's giving me 10 times one thing you can do with this is while defining your parameters you can write what the value it should be like it should be a string it should be an integer even author should be a string so i'll do string quantity should be in the form of integer so i have put that integer now you can see that sold is equal to zero which is already an integer so there's no need to specify it directly the uh, the value that is um, type that it takes is always integer now this cannot be a good solution for these uh, problems so the best thing that can be do or uh, we do by using an assert statement now what is an assert statement it's a statement keyword to check the match between the code and the expectations let us take an example and understand so i don't want anyone to enter the cost of the book in the negative form so what i'll do i'll use an assert statement by putting the condition after the assert statement that cost should be greater than or equal to zero that means your cost should never go in the negative terms so i'll use a cost zero suppose for example if we see over here if i'm giving the cost over here as minus 10 now the cost is the minus 10 that i'm giving for b2 and it will be giving me an error because see it's giving assert cost should be greater than or equal to zero it means it shouldn't be in the negative terms you can give even even you can uh, print it cost we are inside here this is a formatted string that will get cost is less than zero if i run it will give me an assertion error where there should be a comma and you can define the values that you want you can check down right here assertion error cost minus 10 is less than 0 that means you are saying that the, the value i have entered is less than 0 right we have seen how to handle the variables by giving an assert statement now we'll see about class attributes we have seen an instant attributes when we have created uh, in the beginning by creating an instance and after that creating the attributes for that related instance or an object now we'll create in class attribute right Suppose, for example, for all books, there is a discount rate. If we talk about class attributes, for example, if we see we have the number of books, right? For those number of books, there is a discount of 20% or this, there is a discount of 30%. Now, the amount that the person should pay is 
is equal to the amount into suppose there is a 30% discount 0.7 suppose the amount is of 100 so there will be 30% discount means the book will be given in 70 rupees now this is the 30% discount now this is a class variable that we have uh, defined in a class let me create a function using def discount applied what will be the discount applied on the particular book right so that will be return self dot cost into into bookstore dot pay bookstore dot pay now what is that bookstore dot pay the value of that is 0 0.7 now it will multiply 0 0.7 to every instance that you create i have created again the two instances I have created the two instances so as we have seen we have uh, created a uh, discount applied function where the cost and the applied discount will be multiplied print a particular amount that should be paid to buy the particular book now uh, let us uh, call that particular function by using b1 object right b1 dot discount applied and i should put it in a print statement see it's giving me the 105 rupees that i need to pay for the book of cost 150 rupees similarly if i apply for b2 that is booked 2 it will give me what it will give me 70 rupees so this is how we use the uh, class attribute and there is another uh, problem that suppose there is an suppose if i want to give discount for only b1 if i want to give See, every book has a discount rate of 30%. Now, I want uh, a book B2 to have a discount rate of 50%. How can I change it? I can do it by similarly by creating an attribute for that particular instance B2 dot pay is equal to 0 0.5. Now, whenever I multiply it, it should give me the discount rate that I need to apply. But when I check, actually I need to get 50 rupees, but it's giving me 70 again. So what we can do here, we can change the bookstore because it's always giving these this class attribute whenever I call any of the object, whenever I call to any of the object to this particular function. So what I can do, I can remove it and I can name it as self because whenever the particular object call whether it be a class or be a, it be a instance the value of that particular attribute will be this um, will be using over there so now the answer will be changing it should be giving 105 and 50 yes that's right and we got it this is what the class attribute works and if you can change the value of the class attributes even in the instance attribute so this is what the class and instance attributes are suppose if i want to see all the attribute i want to see all the class attributes and the instance attributes right what i can do i can just use the bookstore dot underscore underscore dict which is a short of dictionary keyword so dict this is what gives me the class attribute complete see i have I have whatever the methods I have, I mean, whatever the methods and whatever the attributes I have, they will be displayed. Now, when I call it similarly to the, just, uh, to the instance level, if I call it B1, and it will be printing all the, see, I have attributes that I have created. You can call similarly to the instance B2, and yeah, you are with it. And we have used yourself to make it dynamic so that whatever the object or whatever the instance calls this particular uh, method it will be displaying uh, it will be taking the value of that particular instance if i am saying bookstore dot pay i want to see what is the payment so it will be giving me 0.7 but if i call it from the instance level like if i'm calling it from the instance level suppose if i'm calling it from the instance level it's giving me the same thing that means that's giving me the same value as of the class attribute because there is no value being defined in b1 if i pay b1 dot pay is equal to 0. 3 the 70% discount so it will be giving 0 0.3 that's just the difference be different between the class and the instance attribute if i want to see the number of instances or object that has been created i can now uh, do in this way by creating null is equal to by creating a list with all names and then i am appending all the uh, instances that i have created for the bookstore class dot all 
then you can print it over here book store dot all whatever the uh, objects or instances that has been created you can print it over here right now the number of instances that I have created is v1 and v2 and the number of times it is printed is two times right now if I want it to be more presentable even I can use a for loop for this particular thing is for instance or for let us say for i in bookstore dot all print out so it's printing me line by line but if I want it to be more presentable then I can use a repr repr magic method def repr this is a magic method that we use for representation so what we can do is I can instead of giving it me uh, giving me in that way I can ask the this method to return me in the form of formatted strings right with um, with seeing me that this this is an instance right you are uh, giving me an instance with the values of these particular thing with the values of what this is self.title comma self dot self dot cost comma self dot right, author cost self dot author self dot cost self dot quantity self dot cost self dot sold see the way it used to be or be printed and then the way now it is being printed by using the REPR method this is the way that you represent the particular see this is for B1 B1 this is an instance and B2 this is an instance if I want suppose if I have created another class this would make a changes that will come across uh, that will come in the forward uh, for in the further session for now let us understand the concept of inheritance till now we have seen how to display with these variables and all now let us understand the concept of inheritance for example if I'm saying the inheritance concept I have if you have seen my previous video of theory uh, on learning OOPS concepts you have seen how to how the inheritance concept work so we write while inheriting we write the uh, inherited that is the parent class or the base class we write the base class in the parenthesis of that particular class suppose for example I'm creating a class another class of suppose there are uh, several books in the bookstore right I want to create and separate book a separate class for the novel no, with, uh, the books which are in the uh, which are type of novels so I am creating a novel type and what I'm doing I am inheriting it from the parent class with bookstore now all the variables attribute will be inherited in this complete uh, class right what is the use if I, uh, what is the use of inheritance can I copy everything from the top to bottom right so here we have so uh, what we can do to reduce this kind of thing so uh, first of all there is one more parameter of our own that is self dot suppose there is a copy which is damaged so self dot damaged is equal to damaged so let me write it over here you give me an error because whatever the default values you give should be at the end now I have given the uh, damaged values so what is uh, suppose if I suppose if I cre create a function which uh, shows me loss of the damage return me what will be the loss if there are the number of books damaged with the number of uh, the cost of the particular book so self self dot cost into self dot damage and this will give me an output for that particular loss that I have got for the damaged books now what uh, is the problem with that we are inheriting uh, we are copy and pasting everything from the top to bottom so what we can do we can use the concept of inheritance over here how we can do the concept of inheritance over here by using a super method and writing in it right now you can pass all the values of title comma quantity author comma quantity comma cost sold and some cost damaged comma sold so these are the values that I have passed to this particular uh, novel class this is a subclass so that I can access all the variables and methods from this particular class so I can suppose if I have created an instance let me close everything suppose if I have created an instance n1 that is a novel one and passed a parameter of 
and I have to pass the parameter of title that is let me take just tell me alphabet ABC author A E and quantity of that particular book is 100 the number of cost cost of that particular book is 160 and damaged and that uh, damaged books are five suppose there are five damaged books right and the sold given is suppose there are 100 books 75 is being sold and from that five are damaged so if I give this and call the particular function if I call the function of that particular class it's easy you can call it n1 dot loss seven are given so watch this error so before we were getting an error because we are not inheriting the damaged attribute from the parent class right that's why we were getting an error and we have solved it and right now we are uh, printing the loss and the loss you are getting it as an 800 because the cost that you have given is uh, 160 and there are five damage so you are getting an 800 as a loss of that particular five books and till, uh, till here we have completed that how to uh, uh, use an inheritance concept over here and we can call even the parent class method like print n1 dot discount applied and when I do it it should give me the discount applied is 112 so I can access all the variables all the I mean I, we can access all the attributes and we can access all the methods of the parent class by inheritance and we can also uh, uh, make it the public private and protected by using the underscores and double underscores ways see suppose if you want to make the uh, if you want particular attribute to be accessed only for that particular class and the subclass then you can use single underscore that is protected if you want to make it private then you have to use double underscore for any attribute so that it will be accessed only that particular class for example if you have seen here if I have made this double underscore that means I can access only in this particular class I can't even use it in the instance this will give me an error right now check it out because uh, this will be giving me an error when I remove everything because I can only print it inside the class so it will be giving me an error so suppose So I can only use this private as inside the class, not even in the instance. If I say print b one dot title, it's saying it has no attribute, right? That means you can't access it. Now, when you say underscore, it will print you because you're making it as protected, not private. It's printing learn Python. This means you're making this to access in that particular class and also in the subclass. But when you're making private, you can print only inside the class. Now, when it's single underscore, you can access it from this particular class and also access it from this particular class. Suppose if I've created over here, or suppose if I say print n1 dot title, it will give me a title because it's not private. But when I make it private, that is double underscore. First of all, you can't access even from the, how can you access it from the subclass? So it will give me an error that books to objects has no attribute underscore title. Sorry, you can go with underscore underscore two, but it will give you an error. It means it's saying that this is only a private. That means you can print only from this particular class. If I say print cell dot main, then only it will print from inside the class. Check it out. When I call it from inside the class, it's giving me an output of learn, learn Python. When I call it outside the class, it's giving me it's not attribute. There's no attribute of underscore underscore title. So we have seen uh, this is also the called the process or the concept of 
encapsulation where we have access specifiers by using private, protected, and public. Public is like writing this uh, attribute. Private is writing double underscore and public is writing single underscore. This is what we uh, we have learned using few of the examples and becoming another we uh, and the coming upcoming videos will learn more about object oriented programming about inheritance concepts and also about all the other like encapsulation inheritance abstraction all these forms will learn in the upcoming videos thank you everyone for watching this video we'll be back stay tuned